Paulina is on her way to meet her friends. After the breakdown of the German coalition, she doesn't want to be alone. The news that the Social Democrats, the business-friendly FDP and the Greens will soon no longer run the country has shaken her. It was a totally crazy day. You woke up in the morning thinking that, after Trump's election, nothing could possibly be wilder. And by the evening, the German federal government fell apart. Her reaction? To get politically involved. Paulina fears that the far right will benefit from the coalition's collapse. So she's joining her friends at a demonstration against hate and incitement. This is the task we all face now, making sure we actively bring people back to support good, progressive politics. Many young people fear that with the collapse of the coalition, Germany could become less capable of taking action, both domestically and internationally. With the Russia-Ukraine war happening so close to us, and now with Trump back in government, I can imagine that something could happen quite quickly that affects us too. For me, the most important thing right now is that a stable government is formed. The coalition parties have shown over the last three years that they're not really able to do that. Young and old have been dissatisfied with the constant bickering within the three-party coalition. The young liberals want to look ahead. The FDP is not solely to blame for the premature collapse, they say. For the next government, what I wish for are measures to make sure the economy runs smoothly. A lot of citizens and businesses are fed up and urgently need relief just so they can do their jobs properly. But according to the polls, both the FDP and the Greens will lose votes in the next election, while the far-right AFD will gain significantly. The conservative CDU has the best chance of becoming the strongest party. Paulina was dissatisfied with the outgoing coalition. Green issues were too underrepresented for her, but a CDU-led government is no good either. I think these are really tough times, but I also believe that we can make a lot of change if we come together. Standing up for their own issues is important to many young people. Most aren't especially saddened by the end of the coalition. Now we move to Moldova, a country in Europe's east that has set its sights on joining the European Union. President Maya Sandu is a driving force to bind her country to the West and won in recent presidential elections. Still, many Moldovans see their future turning back east. Sandu only narrowly secured the election against her opponent, who was backed by a traditionally pro-Russian party. Our reporter traveled across Moldova to take the temperature as the dust settles after the election. This is the border of a nation on the edge. Here in the Moldovan town of Bazarabeaska, Ukraine is just meters away. We feel like we're at war. We can't develop properly. While there has long been a pro-Russian breakaway region in Moldova, it's the war next door in Ukraine that's really made this country a geopolitical battleground. Earlier this month, voters re-elected their pro-Western president and narrowly backed her plan to legally lock in Moldova's bid for European Union membership. The runoff was marred by a vote-buying scheme, bomb threats at overseas polling places and reports of illegally organised voter transport from Russia. Here in the country's farthest corner, some don't expect much from the future. Things will stay the same. I just don't know. They might even get worse. But in the capital, Chisinau, the mood is more upbeat, especially after incumbent President Maya Sandu won against her Russia-friendly challenger in November. 
It was past and present members of Moldova's diaspora, voters 